Chin, chin. Chin, chin to you. Ciao. This is Esther. Buonasera a tutti. Sono Alfredo. Bedu, bedu. <laughs> Greetings from Sicily, where it's late April and spring is springing here in Sicily. What a beautiful day we had. We have a lot to talk about. We have some new legislation that is coming up about changing surnames for kids. That's very interesting. Wait to hear what his response will be. There's also many changes happening in May for travelers who are coming here to Sicily and Italy to know about. We, as always, will take some questions and a hodgepodge of all things about Sicily. So let's start with this nice couple that we met this afternoon, uh, Harry and Joan from Canada. They're not Sicilian. They have all types of backgrounds. Uh, she, in fact, is has Ukrainian heritage. And where was he from? I'm trying to remember. I believe it was Min Germanic. No, Ger Dutch, 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 Dutch heritage. Dutch right? background. But they're here in Sicily and they're doing three months here and going home for three months, coming back to three months. And they're staying all over the island, exploring the island. They're really living like Sicilians. Uh, he's doing some cooking uh, classes and they're traveling around. And I just love to hear that, you know, people not of Sicilian origin, just falling in love. But if you're Sicilian, you know, if you've been to Sicily, there's so much to fall in love with Sicily. They have no intention of applying for dual citizenship or any of that stuff. And it kind of makes sense. Uh, they have a beautiful place to, in, uh, by Reposto, which isn't so far away. Fully furnished villa. They're paying less than $1,000 a month. Okay. Less than $1,000 a month. Three months. Then they go back to the Winnipeg area, Winnipeg, uh, Canada mm. area. Or Florida. Or Florida. And then they come back. Okay. That's what you call being carefree. Okay. They don't They're have enjoying they life. don't have to close down anything. They don't have to repair anything. Three thousand a month. You know, I used to spend three thousand know, a month. Nine hundred. Nine hundred a month. Nine hundred a month. Three thousand for three months. I used to spend that much money on a weekend in New York City. <laughs> but there's Seriously, other I'm Joe and you. Michelle are doing it. They're over in uh, province of Palermo, Jody De Luca in Librizzi, and soon another town. Uh, so it's a great way to really experience Sicily, to be on the island and picking different spots. That's really, really important. Pick different spots during different months. And they were talking about being here in January and being cold and not as pleasant and not too much going on. So just some things to keep in mind if you're planning on coming to Sicily. They got stuck in Rome. On the day that the country was locked down. March 4th. How can I ever forget? Right. 2020. The day that Italy says nobody can leave the house. They had just gotten to Rome. So they spent two and a half months in Rome. All right. Which is a good place to get stuck, I guess. They didn't mind it. And they didn't mind it. They were able to <laughs> trust the Verdi section of Rome. They were able to kind of like wander around as long as they said that they were going shop and they let them go. And I guess that's true. The same thing for us, yeah, too, right? Of course. So they used to carry a shopping bag around and they went any place that they wanted to go. So it was a great, the nice a couple, great very couple. smart and intelligent people. And we love, we gravitate towards uh, smart people and intelligent people, very successful in life. And uh, hope gets, hope we get to see them again. Yeah. All right. So we talk about some new rules that are coming, new rules, new things coming into effect in May in Sicily and Italy. Um, so they're talking about getting rid of masks, even indoors, but not everywhere. Uh, it's going to be up to shops and uh, restaurants and also supermarkets and so forth to decide whether to allow or not. But they will mandate uh, for you to keep wearing a mask in places like cinemas, in certain situations, you know, theaters, indoor theaters, things like that. And by mid-June, if you're planning to come to Sicily, they're planning on getting rid of 99.9 .9. and i say 99.9 .9 because with this government you just never know <laughs> you know they said they're uh, going to have a rule out soon it hasn't come out yet but 
So there you go. Some good things to look forward to when traveling here to Sicily and Italy, getting rid of the Super Green Pass. The Super Green Pass, as we've come to know, is a requirement to enter places and go places requiring vaccines. The other place that they will require um, masks is transportation. So keep that in mind. And also, when you're going back to the States, as far as I know, you still have to fill out the locator form? No. You don't. No. Okay. Get and it we'll, tested. We'll, you have to get to get tested still. Yeah. Okay. So yes, the only thing I know is you have to get tested when you go into the United when States. But it's different back in every to the country. United States. And the prices are getting lower too. I've been getting all sorts of notices from um, different airlines of price drops. You know, for those of you who have Capital One, here's another little hint. Talking about hints, they have a travel thing. Okay, a travel section. When you go into Capital One, you click travel, and you tell them where you want to go. And they will find you the best price, and they'll even tell you when to buy the ticket. They'll say, don't buy it now. We think it's going to go down. A week later, don't buy it now. We think it's going to go down. Honey. Yeah, it's a great thing. And you can get your miles, and you can use use your miles on it, too. Capital One, I'm telling you, is really, really impressing me, buddy. Yeah. Really impressing me. The other thing happening May 1st, so there's all types of legislature, all types of things having to do with uh, conserving energy, trying to become more energy independent, uh, not relying from outside oil, outside gas, and so forth. So listen to this law that's going into effect May 1st. It's called Operation Thermostat. Operation Thermostat. <laughs> it's called Operation Thermostat. After May 1st, in public places like schools and public offices, you can't have your air conditioner go below 25 degrees or 77 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a law. There you go. Well, that's Operation not that's not in Thermostat. all places, okay? That's in only public, public. All yeah, public places that. and schools, okay? Schools, okay? And by the way, schools still have to wear masks. Am I correct in saying that? Yeah. 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 The school then, do, so these kids are going to be sitting at their chairs sweating their asses off. No, but school finishes early June now. Oh, okay. <laughs> Forget that. <laughs> and then May 1st is, of course, uh, Labor Day, which is a holiday here in Sicily. So that's all the stuff happening May 1st. That's it's fun. really not a holiday. It's really a uh, a day for the uh, left-wingers uh, to... Uh, Stop it. Talk about, you know, power to the people type stuff. And you, you'll see what's going to be going on in Rome well, on May 1st, in- right? Not just Alfred the lefties, but labor. It's a day to recognize workers, to celebrate workers. Uh, They'll be fighting for equal pay, equal time, better working conditions. And Alfred, I'm sorry, but a lot of them have just cause to do that. Yeah. Well, let me say this to you. This I was just reading an article. La Cecilia today, one of the most famous restaurants, the chef, the owner was saying he can't find any help. And he's offering 1,400 euro a month for the wait staff and not to put it in the paper Where's and that? everything. It's in Rome, Palermo. He's well, in Palermo. Well, that's, and not that's a single a person, uh, that's a not topic. a single person. Well, to me, it's all about the worker or it's about the mentality of the worker. And it really depends on who you are. Okay. That's how, that's how I view at it. I think if you're of our generation, you understand the value of work. But a lot of the young kids, unfortunately, who are getting free money, don't. That's just my opinion. All right. But anyway, Labor Day is coming up and it's a day to celebrate the workers and also there'll be demonstrations and so forth. So keep that in mind if you're in the area of May 1st. Alfred, this legislation about surnames just made me go, what? What? Talk about it. This is huge. Huge. All right. No, this is huge. You know, in Italy, if when when a woman gets married, she has the option of keeping her name. Mm-hmm. OK, which is profoundly different than in the United States. The vast majority of people in the United States, they adopt the name of their spouse. Right. OK. So the question happens, what happens when they have a child? 
what's the surname of the child going to be? And well, wait a historically, it's well, always you didn't set up the legislation. The legislation would say that the child would have that you can have the option of either the father's or the mother's surname. And then when there's a divorce, what happens? Oh, no. When there's a dispute and they can't agree, then by operation of law, the kid gets both names. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? So typically it's the father. Uh, but uh, if they can't agree, if say the mother wants to put her name, but the husband says no, and they can't agree, the child gets both surnames. So like Alfred Teresi Zappler, that would be my mother's name, Teresi Zappler. Okay. So I sense would have two surnames. Okay. So I asked Esther a rhetorical question. All right. So if I have two surnames like Alfred Teresi Zappler, I'm a kid, and I marry a gal who happens to have two surnames. Two surnames. Let's say it's uh, Vita <laughs> somebody else, okay? Vita uh, uh, DeLuca, okay? There's a good one, right? And we have a child. And then we can't agree <laughs> on the name. The rhetorical question I asked is, <laughs> does the kid have four names then? I mean, did, does anybody think, of this think about what do you guys does think anybody of this think about this stuff? Because <laughs> under the legislation, you're gonna have you know who has that? Mexico. Mexico has pretty much the same rule, by the way. And you could see a person having, you know, seven or eight or nine surnames going back several generations. But now Italy has that. So I wonder how that's gonna go off. When people are going to try to get their their uh, documents and squared away for their citizenship in about ten years, another interesting issue, buddy. All right, that's a good one. All right, we've got people here from all over, including Australia, in Sicily, also many people from the United States. Peter Scipoletti, I hope you're feeling better thinking about you. Jody is here from Librizzi. Okay. Uh, Jim, oh. uh, Jimmy Ingram, I want to tell you a little secret over here. Thanks to your peeps, <laughs> about 10 minutes ago, I averted Esther, 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 a Esther, situation. Esther deployed three peeps to the uh, kids next door. Who were playing soccer. Flat out bribery <laughs> for them to go in the house. <laughs> My True. three favorite peeps. Out of the many that he sent. <laughs> Can you imagine that? She says, no, no, we need we need to have silence. I says, okay. Come Peeps. on, it was your idea. It was my idea. Okay. <laughs> All right. But um, Anona's world, anything new travelers should know uh, if coming to Italy the next few months. I think I've covered most of it, but if you guys have any more questions, let me know. So masks still required when traveling. That is for sure. All right. Uh so Alfred, Tony Patty, you know today, today Italy and uh, Poland, and who's the other country? Is it Romania? We have Mexico here too. Uh, Romania is another country. They're in a little bit of trouble because today was the deadline where they had to pay Russia for the gas. Bulgaria. Bulgaria, excuse me. They had to pay for the gas in rubles. Of course, all of the EU says we're not paying anybody in rubles. So. Today was the deadline, and they shut off Poland's today, and they shut off Bulgaria's today because it, it has to go back a month, you know, because if, you know, if you don't pay within a month, child, they shut you off. And Italy's is, Italy is coming up. So people are panicking. I mean, people are panicking because if they got to get their gas, gas shut off. Now, fortunately, we're coming into the weather, good weather here, so people aren't going to have to worry about heating their homes but other forms of gas they use in their house for their gas stoves or, for example, if they have a, uh, uh, a heating unit or something like this. OK, so right now, that's one of the conversations and it's all about the ruble. So early. Wait a sec, let's let's stay on that for a yeah. second, because there's a lot of things happening, you know, here in Sicily. Uh, they're trying to um, there's a uh, a place in Refine Porto and put. And, Podecla, and also in Sita, yeah. the refinery is in Siracusa, and it provides, it's called Luke Oil, and it provides about 20% of the country's 
um, energy. So it's a big deal what's going to happen in the next few weeks with the situation. They ought to nationalize it. That's what honestly, that's what they ought to do. Well, Italy ought to nationalize it. Uh, and the, this ruble, I'm telling you. What? Well, let me tell you a story. Are you tell me that? Let me joke. tell you oh a story God. so you can understand about this. Okay. Wait, this, is this the joke? This is not a joke. This is a true story. Okay. About 45 years ago, a <laughs> famous a famous uh, explorer went to a, an island off the coast of Sicily, and he discovered a new species of animal. He didn't know what to call it. He called it a ruble, the ruble. And he brought it into, into uh, captivity and tried to feed it lettuce and carrots, stuff like that. Would need it. One day, by accident, a five-euro bill fell out of his wallet and the ruble gobbled it up. Well, after a while, it got sick of five-euro bills, so he threw a 10-euro <laughs> bill in it, at it, and he ate it. After a couple of months, he didn't want 10 euro bills anymore. He progressed to a 20 euro bill and then a 100 euro bill. Finally, the guy says, screw you. And he let the ruble starve to death. So now, what is the moral of the story, what Esther? What is the moral of the story? <laughs> <laughs> Money is the evil of all rubles. Okay, honey. That That's a great story. <laughs> um, Nana says, Alfred, I had the same situation when my daughter married her husband with two last names. He ended up dropping his mother's maiden name, but it was up to him to do so. That's very interesting. Right. right. Hi to both of you. Sister and I are coming end of August through September. So excited. Have a beautiful day. Sherry, where are you coming? Sherry Peterson. And where are you going to be? Watch visiting? some of There's our videos. A lot of, yeah. lot of people coming in this period. It's very exciting. So <clears throat> I don't know if you guys know, but for those of you who have been around here for a while, you know that I went to Boston uh, for a few weeks. And I just came back and I was so excited to do one of my favorite things. And that is go to the Mercato because I love going to the fruit and vegetable. And I was really off struck, Alfred, that we still have artichokes. We still have fava beans. Some things that are gone by now are still in the markets. Of course, we have the spring stuff coming up like strawberries. I saw some Nespoli. Um uh, but a lot of the winter crops are that still are still around, like yeah. the purple cauliflower, end of April, that's very, very unusual. So that's some of the things that we've been doing. We've been meeting with some of our uh, bus companies, hotels, and so forth, getting ready for our tours that are coming up and meeting some of our friends. And what else? Huh? Well, the first one, the first time I took her for a ride after she had recuperated for a day or so was she she said she mentioned to me how lush and green the countryside is. I mean, right now it is green. OK. And yellow and red. Oh, and my purple God. Wildflowers. Right. It's everywhere. like explosions of colors, but very green. And when we went yesterday to San Gregorio to our uh, fruit guy, fruit and vegetable guy, we bought a, a purple cauliflower that looked like it was about 18 inches in diameter. It was giant. How much is that? It wasn't cost? the biggest one yeah. we've seen, how but it was that? it was about three euro. Three euro, right? We'll, we'll probably get how many meals would you figure we'll get? We already ate. We already had half a nice of it. meal. Half of it. Yeah, we ate half of it today, so we'll get at least another meal out of it. And it's delicious. It's got the uh, purple top on it. Okay? It's called the purple cauliflower, honey. Oh, it is. <laughs> It's really Listen, good. Listen, I want to know and if wait, you guys, one, one, one wait, more before, I, about cauliflower. Let me just yeah. stay on cauliflower. So I have different ways of making cauliflower, either just boiled and then on the plate you put EBOO, um, or you put it in the oven with some EBOO, some salt, pepper, hot pepper flakes, and a little bit of onion, put that in the oven, or you boil it and then saute it on a different pan with um, some garlic and yeah. olive oil, or I love this one, you make cauliflower soup, blend it and eat it sort of like a cream of cauliflower soup. But I'm looking for new cauliflower recipes. So if you guys have any, let me know. Cauliflower uh, and broccoli are two of the most nutritious and healthiest vegetables that you could have. Okay. 
I've been the last couple of weeks. I think I've had broccoli four times, different ways. Okay, but as soon as these guys stop growing, I'm off to different vegetables. I mean, honestly, there's such a yep. variety of stuff over here. That's now, let me part. give you a quick for instance. Okay, three weeks ago we, we bought our first cherries. They look good. Cherries, uh, cherries excuse me, strawberries. strawberries. When she was in the states, I bought them. I said they're not going to taste good. Okay, because it's the first crop, and sure enough, they look nice. They tasted fair and then the following week but i ate them okay and then the following week the other ones came out and i says ah they probably taste better than last week's so i bought them and correct they were better and then finally yesterday she bought some strawberries for the house they were big and they were brilliant red and what did i say to you these are the best ones yeah. we've had so far. It's just, that's the get progressive. Can I tell better. you guys about strawberries? I will never forget my first year here in 2014. And I first tasted a strawberry. And I was like, I had an experience. I was like, I have never tasted strawberries like this. It tasted like candy. It tasted like strawberries. That was one of my first memories, having strawberries. And just thinking the, the taste was so robust, so good. Um, Alfred, Harry is here. Thanks for the great visit. Harry, we talked about you guys earlier in the show. So once we're done here, scroll to the beginning as we talked about our visit and what we did. And we actually forgot to mention that we took them to our favorite little shop there in Via Grande. I want Harry and I to come over here. I want Harry to come over here with his lovely wife. And I Joan. want to sit on Joan. I want her to sit on this deck. And I have a couple of Cubans over here. That's the guys. And uh, we'll smoke some Cubans and we'll reminisce about life, Harry. I think I think you'd like the view that we have. Why don't you show Harry what our okay, view let's is? So grab I'm that. Just, yeah. Hold on one second. Okay, Harry. ready? We're going to show you our view. There it is. Boy, there was big fog here about an hour ago. Couldn't even see the sea. But there you go. There's our palm tree. A chitrezza is down there. And down there, usually the sheep and the horses and all types of animals come down. So there you go. So we're looking forward to that. All right. There was a question here that I, oh, Tony first. Let me just say something to Tony. That's a good one. Bread and uh, fry cauliflower for rats. That is a good one. You know what? I haven't tried that. Everything, they serve a lot of things breaded here, like eggplant, zucchini, um, you know, some fish breaded, um, but I have not tried breaded cauliflower. That's a good one. All right. We have here, I, someone asked about September. Uh, let's see. Sherry says we are coming from Colorado. We're staying in Shefalu, one of my favorite places and awesome. They've been watching our shows. They're really good. Thank you. Okay. Pasta with cauliflower. Yep. Alfred has had Pasta with cauliflower. That's you know, Joe, Jody DeLuca says she doesn't bo uh, boil her cauliflower. Or, or the reason I bo we boil it is for one one reason: is Esther loves green, ve or just vegetable broth. Jody knows that. Okay, so what we do is we boil we boil the uh, cauliflower, and then she takes the cauliflower out, and she will put uh, it in, the and she'll saute the uh, leaving the broth. And then we drink the broth. So it's kind of like always having soup. And we were just talking about that today because we do the same thing with broccoli, cauliflower, spinach. What's the other one? Uh, Shimmy didapa, uh, uh, broccoli Santa robbery. Pay. So all the every time we buy broccoli, uh, uh, veggies, and we do with that recipe, we always have a nice little clear broth soup. Or sometimes I'll put in EVOO, salt, pepper, and sprinkle a little bit of cheese on it. She doesn't do, you don't do that, do you? No, I put, no, I do put Parmesan. She yeah. puts a little Parmesan on it. And I'm telling you right now, it's good to have broth every day. One thing I've learned with Esther is broth is good for you. That's right. Uh, cut into florets, dip and batter and fry. That's a good one. All right. Um, are there any festivals in September and Me. first part of October? Oh, yeah. <laughs> every oh, weekend. yeah. Every uh, Sherry, you're going to be in Shefalu, and I know there is a mushroom festival is when up in that area. There's that's a mushroom. In, that's in uh, that's in Rico Bono's place. What's their name? Well, that's up there somewhere. But you know what's what happening in, in October, place? first part of October? Every Sunday, 
of October, there's festival in Zaparana Etnea, which was held in Trekastani because of COVID in the past few years. But I'm thinking it's going to go back to yeah, its original it place of Zaparana Etnea. And it's the first Sunday of every October. It's called Otto Brata. We did an entire episode. It is one of the most elaborate festivals I've ever been to in Sicily. Literally, the whole yeah. main town is Casabono. The whole main town, the main roads, all two main roads, and then the public garden. And below the public garden, it's filled with all types of vendors, all types of artists and crafts, people literally sitting there and uh, chipping away at olive uh, wood and making some kind of a beautiful Christmas one or something. Uh, then you have the metal workers, you have people working on ceramics, you have the beekeepers, you have, of course, plenty of wine, plenty of Sicilian liqueur, and the best, plenty of great Sicilian music. It is one of the most highly recommended yep. festivals in Sicily happening every Sunday in October. But if she's going to be in Sheflu or any area throughout Sicily, if you have Google Drive, okay, Google, you know, on your phone, uh, places, go to places and just type in what's happening this week. Okay, and they'll give you a listing of all the festivals. They call sagras the festival. Of. No, no, no. Festivals are of the saints. Sagras, sagras are, are of, of like food, food or something stuff, like okay? that. So you can go. That's it's almost priceless. Okay, because they change the dates all the time. But that Google is terrific to find out the local stuff. So make sure you yeah. you understand how to use that Google places it's well the terrific. other thing is that each town has a patron saint and while we know many of the dates many of the main ones these little towns you have to check wherever you are yep. different dates but those happen throughout the year so you can expect a some kind of a festival throughout the year every single month here in sicily so it just depends where you are but there's a lot of events that have been halted in the past two years are starting including religious processions including these organized festivals yeah, and sagas. They're, coming, they're all coming back this is going to be a good hopefully it's going to be a good year except for Taumina, they're having a little problem right now for those of you who are going to be visiting Taumina this week they don't have any water up there <laughs> their water pump broke and they have to put in a whole new water because trying to get the water up that hill must be a pain anyways but i guess their major water machine they haven't had water up there for three or four days they anticipate a few more days but imagine going on vacation coming over here oh and in, they're telling in, people in don't don't uh water the plants don't cook you know buy a bottle of water and all this stuff but you know you know how people are that's tough that's tough um nick says oven roasted cauliflower garlic extra virgin olive oil spices and roasted breadcrumbs over spaghetti that that's terrific. sounds fantastic nick, that sounds good okay james the chef james i hope you're feeling better thinking of you after washing it, I put it in a bowl about one fourth cup of water covered with plastic wrap and microwave for eight minutes. Then remove from bowl and place baking dish dizzle with EPO. That is a very interesting uh, recipe. And then he says he sprinkles it with breadcrumbs and bake for 30 minutes. Yum. All right. I'm going to have to try that. There's a lot of great recipes coming in. I'm loving this. Uh, I boil it to a certain uh, time and add my broken pasta and then cook. Add olive oil and add sautéed onions served with grated cheese. Actually, that's really good to um, hint, Sherry, because that's something that also Alford does. Once I boil the whatever vegetable, whether there's cauliflower or something, and I take the amount of broth that I want out and take the vegetables I want out, he'll make his pasta in that water. It's pretty good. That's really the only way to make it, okay? And then after you get your pasta, last night, was it last night? Yeah, I yeah. wanted pastina last night. That's the small little ones. They look like pieces of rice. So we cooked the broccoli. We par-cooked the bro broccoli, right? And then you scoop it out, and then I put it in a uh, another, di another pan, and we sauteed it. Not crispy, crispy, but, you know, so now it's fork soft. While that was cooking, I took the pasta, cooked it in the, the broth, the pastina, because pastina only takes like five minutes to cook. And then I get the, you know, I get the, the broccoli. I put it right on the pastina. 
And my pastina turned, it turned, it like most pasta does when you cook it in a, a colored water, it turned like a light green. Yeah, okay, it's so good, it's terrific. It's it, in the light green, obviously, is the color of the broccoli. It's it's terrific. It's yeah. good. That Thank way. you, Meg Daster, for that reminder. Our, what? You, our fans are so great. Thank you so much. Uh, if you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button, it means a lot to us. Yeah, and just do me a and favor. leave us a comment because we love to hear from people. But do, thank you for that reminder. For, for you people who kind of stick your nose up about broccoli and cauliflower. Do me a favor, we are just type into Google search health benefits of cauliflower. It's crazy. crazy and then good. health benefits of broccoli. And then we'll have a discussion about it. And for her, health benefits of what's that other what stuff that you make? Uh, the, the other green thing. What the hell is it called? The broccoli Robbie? No, 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 that you make the coleslaw with. Cabbage. Cabbage. Okay. That's probably the no, most nutritious and healthful. Isn't well, it? All vegetables are. I mean, it's unbelievable. This is a good hand from Jody DeLuca. Libruzzi has a macaroni festival the first week. I mean, there's just so many festivals. Then anchovy. No, no, that's in August. The anchovy. In Valverde. That's um, a good one, too. We have the Saga de Pesci Spot. The that's Croix, June 22nd, 24th. And, that, and that's over here in where Achi Trezza. Yeah, there's a strawberry festival. Yeah, I mean, there's just the so festival many. festival in Achi Reale. That's in May. Yeah, Pretty soon maybe. coming up. I mean, every town has got like, a, and they're all well known and they're well attended. Oh too. no! What happened here? Uh, Ciao, dear awesome travelers. Wish I was there with you at this moment. Instead, I'm stuck in London, Ontario. With how I miss what happened? Let us know. Okay. What happened? Not sure. Someone is traveling over here. Uh, by the way, speaking of October, Sherry says, thank you. It's on our list. We are going to have a tour at the beginning of October. And one of the things we're going to be doing is going to Oktoberfest. And it'll be around October 3 to 13 or 4 to 14. I got to look at a map, uh, at a map, <laughs> look at a calendar to make sure that, in fact, the first um the first Sunday of October yeah. is included somewhere in the middle because that we like to do that. We like to include one, some type of a festival. For example, in May, we're having our May uh, group and it's always around Noto and the flower festival. So that's, if you're that's interested a fun, a in really coming with us for October, please just let Esther know and she'll take your name and email address down uh, because we're probably limited to eight people or ten people. We're not going to do a big one. That, the days are doing the big, huge ones are over. Well, we never did the big, huge one. Mm -hmm. Maximum 14. 14 Frank yeah, Santa Maria. I love Frank. Frank Santa Maria is my <laughs> I idol. I want to grow up to be just like that guy. Now, listen, Honestly, Frank, Frank. If you are here at the beginning, you heard we had a little bit of political stuff, travel stuff. We have a hodgepodge. A goulash, because you know I'm Hungarian. A goulash. A what is what's another one of those mix? This is a mixed show. This is a little bit about everything. So, but we do like our cooking stuff. Okay. Um, oh, thank I like God, Jim I like, Ingram. Who? Jim Ingram. Something you commented. Just did a second COVID test. Was the first one not not positive? Fado is one of my favorite ancient grains, and another very Healthy choice they eat. sell that all over the place here, Fado. They sell that. The ancient grains here, they, they sell all over the place. They make bread with it. It's a little bit heavy. You know, it weighs it weighs a little bit too. You know, it's uh she she brought me a piece of uh, bread that I'm gonna have tomorrow morning. It's that fig bread. She was up in Via Grande today, and the guy knows I like it. So he's give, he gave her a slice to give to me. So tomorrow morning I'm I was gonna, there with Harry and Joan. What? They were pretty impressed with the store too. That's so a great little store. Of, all I, types of stuff. Right now, Afio's place, great store. Uh, I recall going to a small town called Cala Monacci, and they have a patron saint named San Vincenzo. And in August, they have one of the most incredible fireworks displays I've ever seen. I gotta tell you something about the firework displays at Sicilian festivals are just unbelievable. One year we were at your uh, ancestral hometown of Tre Castagni for the festival of San Alpio Philadelphia Chirino, which by the way is coming up on May 9th and 10th, but the week before they're gonna be having some things as well. The ninth is when the and fireworks. that fireworks display 
with the music. I mean, it was something like the Boston Pops and the it Fourth was of July. Than the Pops. I mean, I was going, here we are in a little town in Trecastani, in the foothills of, in the slopes or foothills of Mount Etna in Sicily. And it's like professional. It's, I mean, the music, the orcs, I mean, it was, you know, the way the, the fireworks were going, was, the music was on perfect rhythm. I was very, very impressed. Archie Bunny Corsi, oh, which sorry, is right honey. next door, still has great fireworks right next door. And let's not forget San Maro in uh, Via Grande. That's right? in January. Right. That's and let's San not Maro. forget for a festival. You want to talk about a great festival, which I'm dying to go to, is in Mileli. I was just going to say that. I said it. San Sebastiano. San Sebastiano. They're just wonderful. And they have, they have a mirror uh, festival and a mirror cathedral in Middletown, Middletown Connecticut. Connecticut. Middletown, imagine Connecticut. Imagine that. Imagine that. But I like our little festival here, San Giovanni Battista. Buonasera. Hey. Here's our neighbor, Francesco. I haven't seen him since I came home. Tutto bene? Grazie, huh? grazie. Bedo. Okay, dopo. Okay. Ciao, ciao. Bene. Love that guy. Ciao. I'll tell you what. I have to give a shout out to Stefania who, uh, while she was in the United States, Stefania sent me an email every day. Checking up on you, I know. How are you? Is everything okay? Can I get you anything, right? Mm -hmm. This guy here, he did the same thing at night. He was checking up on me. I felt like, I don't know what, if that was. I slipped them five bucks each. She slipped them five bucks each? <laughs> that joke was like such an Alfred joke, wasn't it? What? That was like something you would say. Totally something you would say. No. Anyway, Jim Ingram, when's the Couscous Festival in Marsala? Thank you for that reminder, Jim Ingram. The Couscous Festival in San Vito Lo Capo is in September. So I didn't Cheryl, know that they have one in Marsala. I don't Jim. know. Maybe they maybe they do. I don't no, know. the big one, is the famous one is San Vito yeah. Lo Capo. That's that's, that's one, that's one of the one. biggest one. Uh for show. Sure. Uh for show, sure, for sure. Uh, let me see here. There was one other question here, uh, and that's that's in September, but I can't remember. Do you happen to know if the Novax vaccine is available? No, not in Italy. Not yet? It's not available. Is it's not the one. Wait a second. It's not the one approved by the EMA, which is the European Medical Association. Yeah, they're, they're so. going to be doing something else, though. I heard it. Uh, they're fooling around with some type of... Uh, um, a pill to replace one of the boosters down the road. Did you hear about that? No. Okay. Who knows? It doesn't make any difference for heaven's sakes. All right. Uh, yeah. Philip. Ciao, Philip. Um, Philip watched the movie uh, Cirano or Cirano last night filmed in Noto and Catania. Thought of the two. Well, thank you, Phil. Uh, Phil, looking forward to seeing him. He's from his ancestral hometown is Polizzi Generosa. We're going to have a little tour with him and his family, and I'm so looking forward to that. Let me give I you love a that hint. town, Polizzi Generosa. You expats out there and you people coming here, if you have Netflix, okay, uh, I signed up for Netflix and I thought I'd hate it because of the political indoctrination they give you. Basta. But, but Basta. In Italy, it doesn't make any difference because you have an option of watching either the American movies or they have wonderful movies from Italy. Okay. And, and the, the comedies are hilarious, hilarious. And the thing that I like about them is you just press the subtitle button and you can hear the Italian with the English underneath it, it's really been improving my... Oh, that's exactly what I do on YouTube. It's just great. I watch it's Italian stuff yeah. all the time with the subtitles, and it's a great way. Yeah. That's a good point, by the way. Someone asked me the other day... About what? About how did I manage coming here in Sicily in 2014 having spoken zero Italian. And yeah, it's so just... you have an EA. You understand stuff like that, mm -hmm. and you jump right in. But, you, you know, no it wasn't... It Here's... Even if you guys speak no Italian, no Spanish, none of those languages that are in the area, because I did live in Brazil and learned Portuguese at a very early age, um, that you can get by by basic communication, you know, going to the market, pointing, showing fingers. And then after a while, 
It's after going daily out and making those daily connections, daily interactions with Italians. That is the way you improve your language and get your language going. Without Listening to YouTube videos in Italian and subtitles and same for Netflix. That's also one, but I, you know, taking lessons, that's a great way, but the best way is to really practice it. You know, when we moved to the United States of America, uh, I didn't, I spoke a little bit of English because we lived in California, but my parents had us sit down in front of Mr. Rogers and, you know, all the uh, PBS um, shows that had, yeah. um, you know, uh, shows to help uh, people speak or learn English. But the best thing was for me, and my mom always said to me, public do not speak hungarian do not speak your native language in public practice and use your um i was going to say italian use your english so even that al that's what we should do we should start speaking italian in the house oh only <laughs> i have a hard time speaking english for heaven's sakes there's no way but anyway getting back to netflix it's a tr it's good i right now i'm stuck on turkish movies i watch all the turkish movies they're better produced, better acted, and so forth. Uh, and they have, they speak in, 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 in Turkish and the English subtitles. I'm actually picking up the lingo of Turk of Turkey. Listen to it. That country, by the way, is evolving. Turkey is evolving. You could ask her about Turkish Airlines. She's been raving about it. The city of Istanbul is just unbelievable. And the economy is doing very well. And uh, that's where East meets West. That Turkey is where East meets uh, West. And I very much enjoy watching movies from Turkey because I'm learning a lot yeah. about a completely well, different culture. That well, I, that's always a good yeah. advice to give about every other culture. Yeah, Netflix, uh, anyway. Tim, Netflix. what are you watching from Piazza Domo in Catania? Wondering what you guys... Uh, what's yeah. happening there today? Uh, do the decorated donkey carts still parade around? So, Mina, happy you're back outside, uh, Leonard. So there are some. So the decorated donkey carts, which are Sicilian carts. Uh, there's a guy, and he's our good friend Giuseppe Giuffrida. He has a museum in Trecastagni. It's one of the largest collections of Sicilian carts. We did an entire episode on it. Uh, and it's on our channel called the Sicilian Cards. Anyway, his cards are used for some festivals and also some special occasions. But there are some Sicilian cards in the municipal building and also in Catania. No. Well, there's some in the Catania. He's asking about Tarmina. In Tarmina, up by the Porta Messina, uh, there's a building there that has uh, tourist information and they have like two or three Sicilian cards. But in terms of going around town, not that much, only for special occasions. Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, oh, my God. Turkish movies are the bomb. Many <laughs> words sound. She likes That's that, right? That's true. That's true. Many words sound do sound uh, Hungarian. I, I am just, okay. I'm just loving it. This I'm is a good it. question. If one plans the trip, it would be prudent then to isolate as best as you can at least 10 days before so you don't get any colds or infections uh, from COVID. Nick, that's great advice. Great, great advice. Okay. I don't I don't know what anybody else does, but I was talking to my brother, Tommy. We bomb ourselves. We have been bombing ourselves with a lot of different vitamins, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, and P. We've been taking them now for a long time. And I really have to say, something about vitamins. We buy good quality vitamins. I probably spend a hundred bucks a month, 150 bucks a month, who the hell knows. But I have noticed a difference by taking things like vitamin D, vitamin E, oh, vitamin course. C, vitamin B plus. Yeah, I think in this area, as, as I'm getting is. older, okay, uh, I just I just noticed that uh, that I never I never did that before. Yeah. Taking, taking a lot of vitamins. Uh, wait a sec. I saw something here that was interesting. Okay. Uh, my wife and I are coming in mid-June to Catania. She wants to find family in Bronte. Do you know the best way to go about finding out about them? So there's so many ways. You know, one of the interesting things about Facebook is that they have these groups, uh, expats in Sicily, for example, or living in Sicily, or even say the SEI 
D-E-I, Bronte. Uh, you are from whatever town. And there's a lot of people from the town and also um, from other par parts of the world de there that you can put down, hey, my surname, my last name is so-and-so. Uh, that's one way of doing it. Can I tell them the correct way? Then, wait a second. Can then you, tell them the correct you way? could also search. Well, you can hire someone. No, besides obviously. hiring someone. That's no, that's one way. There. Guess what? Our friend Frank Cornelio's uh, cousin found him through Facebook, through one of these sites. Hello, it does work. Wait a minute, okay? This is how she wants to do it. First of all, from Catani to Bronte, it's 25 minutes. All right? You look, you go, you get on the, uh, the, uh, the uh, A19, A18, you look for the sign that says Mr. Bianco, and you get off. Go through Mr. Bianco. And then there's going to be Patano. Uh, there's a few few places like that. And you can hit Puente. Pull off the highway. Go into the – get there before 1 o'clock in the afternoon, preferably around 11 o'clock, and go find to the, the comune, the town hall, and walk in there, right? And bring you with you the name – I don't know if name. they can do that without the, um, reservations Stop. right you now. Don't have, you don't have to have – well, then you contact them, okay? But what you do is you have your ancestor's name and date of birth, okay? They'll pull the records, and sometimes on the records they'll have – on the side columns, names of people who are still alive well, or who know somebody who's still alive. First of all, I strongly suggest you make an appointment, number if one. If you make an appointment, that's the, even better. We, there's been people who have just walked in without appointment and said, no, go make an appointment. That's number one. You, that number two, you. No, no. With no. Betty, we with Betty, they said we got there at like 15 minutes of one and said they said, come back at 3 o'clock, I'm going to lunch. Right. Right. Okay. She didn't have 15 minutes to even start. Anyway, the other thing that you could do is actually, like Alfred said, go to the town and start talking to people. Talk to the police officers, the people in shops. Uh, do you know so and so? And Bronte, you know, Bronte is a small to medium size, you know, I would say small uh, town. So you may find someone who may know someone uh that's happened before by the way people would go um the other one is going to a cemetery eat a pistachio cannoli buy it from there buy pistachios and go look at admiral nelson's house did you know that admiral nelson had a house that's right high five huh i think i forgot <laughs> that right <laughs> Admiral Nelson at a house. There's a Saracen place up there. It's a great little town. I love Bronte. Quincy says, sorry, do you uh, visit any other countries in the EU or just mainly states? He says, no, we visit. I'm Hungarian. I go to Hungary at least once a year. Uh, we go to Amsterdam. But those are mainly. I've been, I've been to. No, uh, now in this okay, period. Okay, no, in this period, I'll go to Rome or Amsterdam. I love Amsterdam. And by the way. You want to know what a, a great vacation for you would be next year? See this week over here, May 1 to 7? Fly from the States to Amsterdam and stay in Amsterdam a couple of nights, let's say at a hotel called the Golden Tulip in Leiden or Sassenheim, because this is the week that all the tulips are in full display, right? Growing. I had an opportunity three times to uh, spend this week in Amsterdam when I was living there and I still remember the tulip fields of Sassenheim how as far as your eye can see yeah. how beautiful it is and then you come here and then you come here that's a great vacation uh Quincy said there's a guy at, on dual citizenship Italy group who travels all over or you can do that but Jody exactly what I said go to the cemetery Bingo. At, look at I said that a few seconds ago Jody is go. such a resourceful woman huh she is Jeez, Jody, I heard that Curtis might be coming into town. Is that a rumor or is that confirmed? That's I'm confirmed. curious about that. That That's is confirmed. confirmed. Yep. Thank you so much for the info. By the way, my wife loves the necklace charm. Awesome, Tom. She got the Trinacria. Ah, great. Glad to hear that too. Uh, his family, Lord Admiral Nelson, also owns a rock and harbor in Syracuse. That's right. That's one of those subjects we really. Jimmy, I sent you that article, by the way, on the Spartans, and everybody knows that the Athenians were in uh, 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 no, Atija. No, that's, that's not him. That's Sean Lewis. No, but Jimmy, I posted it on Facebook, and Jimmy read. Oh, okay. And Jimmy read the article. I was surprised um, at how much 
the Spartans were there as well. I, I always just thought it was the, the Athenians. They were defeated, no, of course, the by the Spartans, set of Cousins. No, of course the Spartans. The Spartans were, the Spartans were there. Were they, had, they, they had the shield, yeah. remember, mm-hmm. with the V, and then uh, Professor Chipola said that it, when they realized that it wasn't the V and they wanted to do, they were uh, Sicilians, they wanted to add the other leg to make the Trinata. You know, I remember when I was in high school, the Peloponnesian War. That's a good place to start. The tension between Athens and Athens and Sparta, and that's how Sicily gets involved in that. Enzo, are COVID restrictions going to go away? Let me give you the quick answer because I did talk about it earlier in the show. Uh, Starting May 1st, they're going to be easing, and then by mid-June, they should be 99% uh, wrong. Um, listen to um, Tim. Exactly. I found four relatives through my community Facebook. Facebook go. is a great way yeah. to find what some a, it family. It really is. It really is. I agree 100%. Uh, okay. Whatever. Admiral uh, Lord Nelson, a big pride to us. Come on. He's just, are you kidding me? Yeah, I would say so. Actually, I'm. I've always been very proudful of as an as an attorney. You know, we get our we get our law in uh, the United States from English common law, which, by the way, is a hundred percent different than law here in Italy. Italy, they get their uh, they get their law here in Italy from primarily three different sources. One of them, believe it or not, still is ancient Roman law. Mm-hmm. Two is Neapolitan law, French law during the occupation by the French during Napoleon's era, two, and three, by statutes and laws that they pass. And things are things that, as a lawyer, for me, is second nature in the United States, where I can just give the answer off the top of my head. Over here, I have to slow down and I have to research what the rule of law is here in Italy because it's a lot different. A lot mm-hmm. different, okay? Especially in the laws of uh, wills and trusts and estates. Almost completely diametrically. Different. It's completely yeah. different, yeah. Very um, interesting. Quincy says, awesome. You're so close to so much history. Are you kidding? Yeah, this island right, is deep and wide in history, and it's an outdoor historical museum. Can I just give one I always comment? say, I Quincy? always say, you don't even have to enter a museum here. Yeah. It's an outdoor museum. You know, Quincy, museum. let me just give you the best analogy, okay? I, we're from the Boston area, okay? And, and Boston has this thing called the Freedom Trail, where you can walk on this red line through all the historic districts of everything that happened during the Revolutionary War. And one of the places you could look at with your eyeballs is the Paul Revere house. You know, the guy that said the British are coming. And you look at that house and you say, you see that house? That house is 250 years old. And people are amazed. (laughs) You come over here, you can point to a house and you say, you see that house? It's 1,000 years old. Or it's 1,500 years old. Or in some cases, like we go up to up to uh, Sadafio, we could show you a tree. The tree of the 100 uh, horses. horses is over a thousand years old. Yes. Yeah. If the earth could talk, if Sicilian earth can talk, the stories that it could tell by the people who were predecessors and walked this earth would stagger. I mean, not only that, our our buildings, I mean, we're talking temples, Greek temples dating 3,000 years ago. So it's an unbelievable island to explore in many ways, not by nature, but also all the remains. You're right. And so Um, if you come here, if you're you're historical in nature, if you're art lover in nature, if you're a food foodie, if you like though, if you like to travel, slow travel like our friends do, they call them slow travelers when they yeah. stay one or two or three months. Then Sicily the should be on your list at some point in time. Sicily should be on your list. Uh, Meng says, "I'm going to the seminar to see a new British film that focuses on the invasion of Sicily in World War II to yeah. liberate from the Nazis. We uh, trick them into thinking the invasion was destined for Greece." Well, that yeah. was that was Churchill. Churchill was the one that uh, wanted to uh, go another way, but don't forget when Churchill was in the First World War, he almost got destroyed politically by going into Gallipoli, where thousands and thousands of British died. So Eisenhower overruled him, and Operation Overlord, a Husky, excuse me, was the name of the invasion here, where you had uh, uh, the guy from uh, uh, yeah, General Patton. And you had uh, what was the guy's name? The field marshal, 
Fort Howard Montgomery uh, were the ones that swept through Sicily. We've talked okay. about so many times on this show. In fact, there's one live that we just focus completely on uh, World War II and, and what towns and, and the whole, it, it's such a fascinating period here, the whole thing that they came here first. Uh, let me just say uh, one, something. One more factoid, please. Yeah. All right. Today, I've been researching uh, a little bit about that very topic in, uh, in terms of the Italian-American contribution to the World War II. And just so you know, there was 1.5 million Americans of Italian extra extraction who fought in uh, World War II, one and a half million, yeah. 300, a little less than 300,000 fatalities, 200 and some odd thousand fatalities. The most interesting thing, though, out of the whole thing is uh, 14 recipients of the Congressional Medal of Honor were of Italian-American extraction. They served mightily, and they gave, they sacrificed mightily to free mm -hmm. Europe from the oppression, not only of the Nazis and the fascists, but also in Guadalcanal, Iwo Jima, Solomon Islands, and every place on the, in the Pacific. As a matter of Great fact, what's that fellow's name? Name Joe, uh, the, the guy that I told you to, uh, Baggioni, yeah. There's one, okay. what, you forgot. Oh, the right? Italian, I can't remember. Yeah, There's, I, at some point in time, I'm gonna start calling them out and giving you little stories about it. It's just unbelievable. Tony, he says, Al will be listening to Dr. Chipola this evening, and he's doing a Q&A on virtual platform through Italian charity. It's fascinating. Tony, uh, Professor Chipola is one of our very dear friends. Yeah. We've had him on the show many times. He's coming here in June, and we're hoping to have more with him. He's a fascinating uh, person and one of my favorite books, What It Means to Be a Sicilian. I learned so much about the Sicilian psyche. I highly recommend it. But he also has several other books on Sicily. He was born um, in Francovilla di Sicilia mm -hmm. in the province of Messina. We've been there. Uh, he is uh, he's the publisher of my four books. Mm -hmm. uh, he's the one that urged me the after he read Cicula. some of my initial writing that I did. He says, you got to write. And after I did my first book, he said to me, you have to write another book. And he kept on pressing me uh, on writing books. And I ended up writing four books on Sicily that have been pretty successful. And Gaetano Cipolla, I would say, is the major influence on me becoming a, a real sisophile. I mean, I love Gaetano, Professor Chipola, great guy. I didn't know that he was the main. I didn't know that. Let's see. What, in terms, of, in terms of. Uh, becoming a oh, yeah, he, he, uh, he was a fellow that uh, kept on feeding me all sorts of books. As a matter of fact, when we mm -hmm. had all things to sing in us, we had a book department. He sent me, I don't know, 150 oh, right. titles of books. And, and when they came in, he'd have notes for me. Elf would read this one. Elf would read this one. Elf would what an incredible that. gentleman. Guy's a great Super guy. smart. Great, great guy. On that note, thank you so much for spending this little time here with us. We love having you here. And uh, we'll see you, I hope, on Sunday or on another episode of You, Me, and Sicily. Thank you for being here. And we're happy to be back outside here, too. Believe me, this is the first decent time. <laughs> we're going to try. Hasn't been and Edna hasn't been exploding. And, hasn't been erupting. and there hasn't been cats and dogs falling. And That's I want to say, Sir Benedica, <laughs> grazie per tutti. Ciao. Ciao.